It is hard for a club to keep coming back from the most important people leaving. We're going to get as many bad runs as we are probably excellent runs. I wouldn't be surprised if they were in there, but I've got them just one place outside the playoffs. The big dog in the yard in League One this season. We've taken on the championship. Now it is time for League One's 1 to 24 predictions. Couple of quick observations about the very unique landscape in League One. We've got this kind of haves and have nots feel as we get bunches of brilliantly performing clubs who've come up from as low as non league competing in the same division with the not so brilliant performing clubs who've come down from the top end of the championship and even. The Premier League. For this reason, we've had a bit of a points canyon, massive gap somewhere in that second quartile in League One for the past couple of seasons. Could it happen again? Also, four teams relegated is brutal and unique in the EFL. That makes the first part of this list very tricky. Let's get into it. 24th, Carlisle United. Paul Simpson did amazingly last season to take Carlisle from a relegation scrap the previous year and up through the playoffs. I was there to witness it. They did, though, just creep over the line. Two wins in 11 during a tough run-in. They only led for 16 minutes out of the 330 they played in the end-of-season playoffs. I hope they don't have it too tough, but Carlisle are my first pick to go down. 23rd, Cambridge United. Let's get this straight. Mark Bonner has done absolutely brilliantly to have Cambridge in League One these past two seasons. I thought they were goners last season, but a quick splurge, five wins after April confirmed, what was a little bit of a great escape in the end. Bit concerned then that a lot of their better players from that great escape have gone. Smith, Nibs, Ironside, Mitov and Jones. Bonner needs to work his magic again fast. 22nd, Cheltenham Town. Now, I don't want to make this too oversimplistic and about one player, but Alfie May has potentially been the most impactful player in League One over the last couple of seasons. 43 goals for a bottom half side indeed. He's gone, and although Wade Elliott did great in stepping into the shoes of Mike Duff, it is hard for a club to keep coming back from the most important people leaving each and every summer. 21st, Northampton Town. League Two promotion race was a bit of a drudge in the end last season, wasn't it? Northampton got there in the end after that final day robbery the previous season. They relied a lot on Pinnock and Hoskins and their output. And look, they very, very much deserved their place in League One for John Brady's work and a lot of wins over two seasons. I just see a struggle on the horizon for my closest geographically placed League One club. They're my final relegation pick. 20th, Port Vale. Right, I'm basing this on the ownership, really, as promotion-winning boss Daryl Clark, he was popular, but he went out at the very tail end of last season. He was replaced by the assistant manager, Andy Crosby. That always waves a flag, rings an alarm bell, however you want to say it. I hope for Vale's sake that he can be the exception that disproves the rule, but... I've got them one place above the relegation zone. 19th, Stevenage. Now, Stevenage may be bracketed as the same size as some of those have-nots, sort of size of the teams they've replaced in League One with their promotion last year, but they do have the Steve Evans factor. We all know what Evans will do on the touchline, tactically, in the transfer market. It will be complete balls-to-the-wall stuff, and it will probably work. Stevenage... To be a horrible opponent, but to stay up. 18th, Fleetwood Town. Not quite sure how to pitch Fleetwood. They were a bit draw-happy under Scott Brown last season, but they had that nice boost with Stockley and Marriott arriving as a front two in January. Ready-made. I'm not sure how the issues that the disgraced former chairman now is experiencing are going to affect things. Fleetwood are telling us business as usual, but... I'm not sure it's going to be the case, so I've got them dropping five places. 17th, Exeter City. Really like Exeter's progression as a club, seem very forward thinking. Last season, though, I do think they banked a good start with the momentum from the previous season's promotion. Also, the front three, 
Brown, Nombe, Stansfield, very free scoring, plenty of goals. Two of them are not going to be there this year, as well as Archie Collins and Josh Key. That's why got them dropping down three places as Gary Caldwell continues to build his team. 16th, Leighton Orient. Now, the good news for Orient is they were miles ahead of the competition in League Two, but that's kind of also the bad news because that meant they cruised over the line, maybe a bit of a drop off at the end, and two star men, Vigaru and Smith, have departed to go higher up the ladder. Look, I really like Richie Wellens. They seem to be banking on bringing in the better players they faced last season in League Two. Can Joe Piggott recapture that Wimbledon form too? I think they're going to be okay. 15th, Shrewsbury Town. Steve Cotterill had Shrewsbury not far off the playoffs, fairly deep into last season. They dropped off and he has gone, been replaced by Matt Taylor. We're probably going to see a change in playing style and much of the playing squad churning this summer. So I've got the Shrews dropping into the bottom half as they undertake what I'd imagine is at least six months of transition. 14th, Bristol Rovers. Here we go. Look, whatever Bristol Rovers do, it's going to be typically box office all or nothing stuff with Jerry Barton, isn't it? Giovanni Brown, just about the most controversial signing they can make. George Friend, just about the most experienced signing they can make. Keep an eye out on Aaron Collins to see if he can do a whole season as good as he did the first half of last season. I'm just imagining, though, it's going to be streaky again and we're going to get as many bad runs as we are probably excellent runs. 13th, Wickham Wanderers. End of an era for Wickham last campaign as Gareth Ainsworth went off to do the QPR job. Matt Bloomfield was there with Ainsworth as a player. He is now in the dugout, but... I can't help feeling we're going to look back in years to come at Wickham's recent brilliance over the last few years as a high watermark. And we might see them now gradually regress to the mean and become a mid-table league one side again. 12th, Wigan Athletic. OK, hands up. This is a complete guess, isn't it? Because Wigan are starting the season with an eight-point deduction. What does it mean? How will it manifest itself? In league one especially, it definitely means a huge total will be needed to compete with the halves up at the top. Sean Maloney did make them harder to beat in the championship, but Will Keane has gone. That removes goals and goal threat. Watmel and McGrath, breach of contract. They terminated their own deals. Feels like another season of sorting out under the circumstances. 11th, Lincoln City. Now, I love to listen to Mark Kennedy talk, and Mark Kennedy really loves to talk. So much passion and thought went into last season, but it's going to be remembered for an ungodly 20 draws. If there is substance behind Kennedy's words, and it goes the way I think it might, there could be something there at Lincoln, but I do feel it's going to be a slow burner. So I've got them holding in 11th spot. 10th, Burton Albion. Now, Burton were proper chaotic under Dino Manria when he arrived last season. And look, I mean that as a compliment. I know he can be a bit of a sensitive soul. Loads of players in and out. Some very big spikes, though, on some important in-game stats with a bit of an up and at style. I think they're going to continue to be a nuisance, a nightmare to play against. And for that reason, I've got them up inside the top 10. Ninth, Oxford United. Huge drop off for Oxford last season for playoffs to really a genuine relegation battle last season. Even after Liam Manning replaced Carl Robinson, that horrible winless run continued and it did look like they could drop at one point. You'd think things now are going to trend up though. If Manning can recapture that third place MK Don swarm, they certainly will. Rodriguez from Notts County, that looks a fun one. If the points canyon is going to exist again, I think Oxford might just be above it, but at the bottom of the leading pack. Eighth, Charlton Athletic. So much of Charlton depends on the new ownership, doesn't it? Will it be better than the previous few incumbents? Who knows? But that fan base certainly deserves a break at this point. Dean Holden, I like. He's now fashioning his own side. I've already given Alfie May the big up in this video. He's arrived, as has Harry Eisted, who went all the way to the playoff final in goal with Barnsley last season. Up two for Charlton, I'm suggesting, but no playoffs. Seventh, Barnsley. And also, no playoffs for Barnsley either, who went all the way, so unlucky to lose, in the 123rd minute of the final. They were on par with all three of the teams who got promoted for a lot of last season, but Mike Duff 
huge influence the manager has gone. So has Mads Anderson. Very on-brand hire, Neil Collins as the new boss. The recruitment is very Barnsley. I wouldn't be surprised if they were in there, but I've got them just one place outside the playoffs. Sixth, Reading. Look, who the hell knows how things are going to pan out at Reading. The fans want the owners out. It has been financial mismanagement and points deductions raining down on them over the past few years. Ruben Seles is in as manager. There's been a bit of a cleansing of a few of those big silly contracts that frankly got them in this situation in the first place. If the ownership is stable, I think Reading will challenge. More issues could derail things once again. So I'm hedging my bets and putting Reading just inside the playoff spots. Fifth, Portsmouth. Too many ins to mention for John Massinho and his squad. But it's time for him to back up the hype now. Very well thought of in the game. He speaks very well. The team trended up when he came in last season. And given the back in and the club size, a challenge will be expected in Pompey's seventh straight League One season. I think they'll be up there. I'm just wondering whether a few more wily, experienced League One managers might have the edge when it comes to the top two. Fourth, Bolton Wanderers. Bolton, on a lovely build as a club under Ian Ever, missed out in the playoff semis last time. So I think we're all kind of expecting the winning habit to continue in some way, shape or form. As much as that Pizza Cup win was great for them, maybe a few less games this year might help. Recruitment looks sound. 81 points last season. I think they'll be in that ballpark again, give or take a handful of points either way. Third, Blackpool. Look, this is all on the manager, isn't it? And Neil Critchley owes it to the pool fans after walking out for what turned out to be a short-lived stint as Aston Villa assistant. Critchley is back, and if Villa and QPR latterly haven't damaged him, he will know exactly what it takes to get Blackpool out of League One. Jerry Yates leaving, that's a blow, but I'm expecting Blackpool and Critchley to be a strong League One presence once again. Second, Peterborough United. Okay, there's absolutely no science to this other than to say it's Darren Ferguson, it's Peterborough, here we go again. I get there's huge changes to the squad, but Peterborough always seem to sign and create stars at League One level and produce teams that score lots of goals and lots of points. Ferguson, so experienced at this level and this club, if they can put that ridiculous playoff collapse behind them, why not another promotion? First, Derby County. Now he's got his feet under the table and the power to use the transfer window. I think we're all expecting Paul Warren and Derby to have a right good run at the third tier this season. Lots of League One ready players join the League One promotion specialist. Yes, McGoldrick, Bielik and Knight are gone, but so are Plymouth, Ipswich and Sheffield Wednesday. And as a result, I see Derby as the big dog in the yard in League One this season. There you go. That's my take on League One this coming season, 23-24. Get involved down there in the comments. I will spare you the full rant from the Championship edition of this video. But to summarise, I very much prefer looking at your own thoughtful and considered attempts at doing the 1-24s to than those awful, emotionally-led, my club higher responses. With that being said, you can click up here to see that rant and the championship list in all its glory as well as the return of Shaley and the kit reviews starting with the championship home shirts for this coming season.